the corner flipping hard Made at least 3,000 on the boulevard Good afternoon. I'm Chris Johnson. You're now tuned back in to KJ Live. We are live and direct from somewhere in sunny Southern California. Um, this is part two of our exclusive interview with NBA veteran Jelani McCoy. Jelani and I spent the better part of the 10 o'clock hour discussing his journey from his humble beginnings in San Diego to his um, elementary school and middle school years to when he uh, decided to attend St. Augustine's in San Diego in high school and then we went over the McDonald's All-American, talked about some friends. Uh, we talked about UCLA, touched on his career in the NBA with the Seattle Supersonics. Um, and he shared some very insightful stories. I hope you guys check out the episode, uh, part one of my interview with Jelani McCoy. This is Chris Johnson. You're now tuned in to KJ Live. Um, we are scheduled to go on at one o'clock with Jelani McCoy. Shout out to uh, official WBM backup. Thanks for the wave. Um, shout out to everybody in the chat. Appreciate you for joining. Jelani should be joining us shortly. Um, go check out my videos. Go subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've got tons of content in there. There's got to be something in there that will pique your interest. Trust me, it's one of those deals. We've flooded the market with content the last 27, 28 days. Uh, you know, things are going well. Um, this has been an exercise and a lot of editing for me, which is uh, something that I didn't even do before this. Believe it or not, um, so it's it's just been an interesting learning experience. Shout out, who Jelani was fire, yeah. Jelani should be back in here. So we're doing we're doing uh, part two of it, and then right here, I can't say I don't know how to say that name. Kyline Y Jam Eland, thank you for the compliment. We appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Shout out Hoop. Suggested I get a, a mic deal going. Yeah, you're right, Hoop. Okay, you're right. I got one. Okay, you're right. Got some new headphones, too. All right. Uh, Jelani should be joining us shortly at the 1 o'clock hour. He, um, I think, was getting some lunch. Our conversation earlier was riveting. We wanted to pick up where we left off. I wanted to explore some more things with Jelani, a little bit more about his NBA experience, and then kind of talk about the segue into um, his professional world, current position. He spent some time as, at a startup uh, as the chief strategy officer. And there is Jelani McCoy. Let's get him up in here. Big long Corvician. Billy D. Williams looking dude. Shout out E. What up, E? Lon, what's up? What up? Man, you good? Hold on, bro. J Man. Yes, sir. Okay, so your screen is frozen. Now you're back on. We're back on. Uh, this is Chris Johnson. You're now watching KJ Live. I'm on live with NBA veteran Jelani McCoy. We we spent the ten o'clock hour, Jelani. I was telling our 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 our, our, our crew. Uh, we, we, we had a really good conversation. I mean, there's the Biggie story. There's the Paul Westfall story. Mm -hmm. There's the stuff about the suspension that we loosely skated over. There's the friendship with Daryl Russell um, that we talked about. I kind of wanted to pick up the show, picking up on that. Um, mm -hmm. UCLA now, what, I, what we didn't talk about at UCLA was the fact that your best friend was uh, at SC, and he was a star football player at SC at the time. Um, Describe your relationship with Daryl in the college years. Daryl Russell, you guys spent you know, high school teammates, now you're at rival schools. Let's hear about that. Hear about some of those stories and just some of that experience, if you don't mind sharing. <clears throat> um, uh, yeah, watching him uh, play, you know, he loved basketball. That was his first love. But watching him play basketball and, and become the player that he, you know, he was a tight end as well. You know what I mean? I remember watching him. One of, the, one of the biggest things I remember from high school was watching him take an out route up the sideline at like 6'5", 285, 
in high school out running like little small DBs and like other little people right up the sideline, like, you know, like he was like wow. a speed guy. Yeah. So f from then on, you know, it, I, I, we already knew what time it was with, with, with him. He was trying to go to places to where he thought he could play basketball because he thought he wanted to play basketball at the same time. But we was like, nah, bro, you might just need to stick to the football thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, he ended up, you know, going the football route, being blue chip. All American, maybe, maybe I think it might be not too far from the same time as Peyton Manning. They oh, had yeah. like a they yeah. had a Ill, they had an ill parade All American team. You know what I mean? Uh, him and Delon. You know what I mean? We went to the same high school, the same uh, at Saints again, all boys school. So they had a crazy crew before he joined John Robinson and them boys over there that see with Keyshawn and them. You know what I mean? And those were some good SC Who was the team. quarterback? Who was the quarterback in those days? Do you remember? Was it Rob Johnson by any chance? It probably was Rob Johnson. Remember was Rob it Rob Johnson? Johnson? Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. it might have been. I, I don't it know. Was I, I got to look at that. Yeah, Rob I got to look at that. Rob Johnson was highly decent. You yeah. know what I mean? And then he had, of course, Willie Mack as a um, as a uh, as a Running mentor. Mate. Oh, as a mentor, yeah. As a mentor, yeah. Willie McGinnis, OG Willie McGinnis. You know yeah, which, I mean? which, which, which brings me to a Willie <laughs> McGinnis story that I... Uh, I have to bring up. Uh, the, here's the funny thing, and this is why I got to get into the Willie McGinnis story, because Lon, this is how I'm gonna set it up. So I saw Willie last, I guess 2019. I was in Denver. My daughter had a volleyball tournament. Oh no! So, so, so I'm out in Denver, and I'm at a volleyball tournament. You know, it's at the Pepsi Center. You know, the whole nine. It's you know volleyball. You know volleyball life. Uh, well, I don't know if you know Lon. It's it's pretty hectic, right? So it's yeah. a lot of courts. So you got to like walk across the whole room and do a bunch of stuff. Um, I'm walking across the entire gym and I'm just trying to get to my daughter's game. And then I see like this six, five, you know, two seventy five eighty 80 with the mug, me mug, the, the curl, the curly top, the, just, really the, the, curl. Yeah. The, the surprising Samoan type curly top that you're just like, Oh, okay. <laughs> with the sweet sweatsuit, you know, Willie Mac always got on the sweet sets. I'm just like, Oh man. So I'm walking, I'm walking, we're walking, you know, I'm kind of like, you know, just looking at him, just like, you know, kind of give him the head nod or whatever. He kind of puts his hand out. We kind of do a light little dap and uh, we keep it pushing. Mm -hmm. So let me break down the originator of the story. So that was 2019. So I hadn't talked to Willie since the story in 1996. When I went since over the situation, since the situation. Do you remember the situation, Jelani? And can you I explain do. to the audience what the beef was and what happened and be completely honest about what happened? Okay. First of all, we was on the other side. You know what I mean? We was over at SC. You know what I mean? We was hanging out with uh, down in downtown. I think Daryl had, by that time, I had the condo. He announced that he was leaving. So we were hanging out there with some SC football players, mainly the, the defensive line and the defensive side of the USC Trojan football team, who were absolute monsters. Like they had a lot of NFL. They had a lot of NFL talent on that side of the ball, right? So we're all playing, we're all playing dominoes. Somehow, conversation comes up, you know what I mean, in the middle, of, in the heat of bones, you know what I mean? Everybody's, you know, talking that ism, you know, and Willie Mack up there in true Willie Mack fashion, you know what I mean, sitting up there swallowed at the table, you know, everybody playing dominoes. Okay. And I, then some, somehow the some conversation turned into six men. Or you were, or you, some, you might have been winning or scoring, and then some, something that then really says something to the effect that you shouldn't be talking because you come off the bench. I believe that's how it kind of came off, you know what I mean? And it came off real matter of fact. You know what I mean? And then Daryl, you know what I mean? The Daryl kind of, it was like, you know, that Harlem Knights thing where everybody turns like, oh. You know what I mean? The music kind of screeched and turned and looked at you, what you were going to do. Oh, and you kind of looked at me for like a half second. And I ever so slightly, you know, I'm your dog. You know what I mean? Your life. But after he said that, you kind of look, and I know your personality. You trained to go too. You were not tied to, you know, you know, bow down to no man, Willie Mack, uh, uh, whoever you want to call it. You know what I mean? So I kind of like gave yeah. you like the, Mm. Like they, mm -mm, not, yeah. not you know what I mean. The don't you know what I mean? Like yeah. the, not, not this time, not this time. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not a good time. You know what I mean? We got to play this one cool. I forgot yeah. how it ended between you two. Yeah, I think Daryl yeah. played a piece, uh, played a peacekeeper in it. But I know it was for it about 
five minutes in there, it was lit at that domino table. So, so, so thank you, Lon, for setting the stage. Uh, that's what happened. But here's, here's how I'm thinking, right? So first of all, if you, you go over to SC and you're hanging out with the defensive lineman crew in 1996, it was a totally different type of energy in that room. It wasn't anything like UCLA. You knew that, uh, you know, it could go down at any given time on the walk-in. It could go Absolutely. down. Absolutely. Dudes was looking you up and down, big six, five, three twenties everywhere, buff shirts off, hanging out like, oh, okay, it's this thing over here at SC. All right. So yeah. <laughs> the other thing too, though, was Willie, you know, we had a little history. It was a shorty involved. You know, I won't get into it. Maybe another day, you know, Willie, Turns Keyshawn, out. Keyshawn, you know, I got into a fight with Keyshawn at Glam Slam and this and that. I forgot about the Glam I, Yeah, I'm not going to yeah. talk about that, but yeah, we got into a fight. But anyway, so, I'm, so, so I'm thinking to myself when Willie does the six man thing, he's, he actually, he clowns. It's not as nice as you just made it sound. He was like, you know, it was horrible. It was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. It, was, it was a major clown, like, like shut your mouth type stuff and. It was like a full-on deal. It was a full-on deal. It was. Now, if anybody that knows me knows <laughs> that I never take that. I never, at that time, I never took that. I was, never. Young, it was on. I wanted all the smoke, this and that. I made a business decision that day <laughs> to take it on the chin, move on with my life, and actually really just live to see another day. Because hey. I think, you know, it was just too many guys. It was too many, dude. I, I was know, so I'm proud not... of you. I really didn't feel like going up against the USC uh, defensive line. And it was too many. Group, it was man. too many, man. I was so happy we didn't have to tussle it was, in there. It was too know. many 500-pound yeah. benching, 900-pound squatting, 4-4 running. I was type. so proud of you. Dude. I was like, look, look, at, <laughs> look, 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 we making real progress right now, man. Look at <laughs> yeah, but I lived that down. So, 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 yeah. So, so that was. But Daryl, Daryl Russell played a big yeah. part in that, and he kind of came in between. It was one of those things, you know, you're not gonna mess with KJ type thing. You know, you can clown, everybody can talk, but it's not gonna be any hands being thrown on KJ. And yeah, that's why I love Daryl so much. Lon, let's fast forward to one of the greatest memories of of my college experience with you and Daryl, the night of Daryl's draft party hmm. at Madison's when. God, I, I can't. I don't know where to begin, Lon. Can you just because you were behind the scenes, you were hanging, you were with them, you were running around with them. I think you were doing a lot with them. Just talk about that experience, what it was like. You know, Daryl ended up being number two pick, but just talk about that draft experience, the pre-draft process for Daryl. Uh, that was crazy, and what was what was I was like training with him at the time too. So yeah. I put on a lot of muscle. You know what I mean? I was doing all the workouts he was doing for the teams and I, yeah. and all that good stuff. So by the time, you know what I mean, he got around to the draft. You know, he was, he was, Daryl was at UCLA a lot, probably yeah. more than he was at SC. Yeah, you know what I mean? Sure. He was, at, he was always in Madison's with us getting cracking. <laughs> he was part of the crew. He was part of the crew. He was part of the crew. He's Daryl Russell. He was part of the crew. I mean, it would even went so, the, the, the love was so deep that I got in trouble, you know what I mean, for wearing a USC Trojan football yeah. sweater on campus at UCLA. But you know, what was dope about that was Kay McNown was all about it. Yeah. What like, did K say? K was like, K, like a couple of the football players was like, you know what I mean? Honest, but you know what I mean? I saw, I, th I saw K, and I was like, you know, at the time, I had some respect for K. McMahon was a bother at the time. I, he had some, you know, yeah, big please. man on campus. Yeah, please, K. Yeah, please. So please. I, I didn't know. I didn't. I was cool with K. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So when I when I, I was like, oh shit, you know what I mean? Here here come K. But he was like, he looked and he was like, oh. yeah, yeah. I, yeah, he was like, we still gonna be, he, you know, he was like, he felt, he was confident, he was like, still gonna be that ass, but okay, I see. It was like, back then, man, it was like such a heightened sense of, like, loyalty going on with UCLA. I see, like, wearing anything like that was taken with such a just, like, ridiculous, like, a go like how could they have the gall to do that? Like, yeah. we wore... But it was it was because we was rocking with D Russ and the yeah, nature of the French. The friendship was super deep, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was like, we had been through so much we had done so much together had mm -hmm. so much fun it was just like how are you we not rocking with our guy but lon the draft party talk about who was there which 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 the part jake, the, the jake i know you probably don't remember too much but i do uh <laughs> the jake, <laughs> keyed, as they say um the jake the snake Plumber? That was the Madison. You talking about Madison? Yes, the Ma yeah, with, yeah, with Jake, Jake the Snake Plumber. 
I can't I remember every who. Every person that was going out for the first round. It was in this like draft eight, was eight of the top twelve picks were eight at the, of the party, top 12. and that's and when Jake was, was going through it too. He was, y'all, in, we, we, were we were some chilling. He was able to get some therapy inside. We were it. chilling with Jake, the snake plumber. He is a legend, like you legend. guys think he is. Trust cool. me, the coolest dude of Down all time. Earth. Just how hey. we thought he was when we watched him play. We was like, he probably cool as hell. No, it's for real. Did yeah. you ever did you ever get a chance to hang out with um um what's my man's name? Michael Moore. He was like heavyweight champ. You remember when the heavyweight champ was coming to Madison? Michael yes. Moore, you ever hang out with him? He was, yeah. he was a cool dude too. He was super cool. Super down to earth, man. I, I yeah. it tripped me out. It tripped grounded. me out how down to earth he was. He was super grounded. Smart, yeah. kind of smart too. He wasn't like a he wasn't like a uh, you know, he wasn't slow or anything either. Like I remember him being able to go back and forth with you. Yeah, shout out to uh, the real boss thirty three. We Man, uh, is the, that the, key? Yeah, we he's the subject of a group chat that we're involved in because we were just marveling over the fact that Keith is still. Hooping, Keith and is looking hooping. I was good. Just looking at him, yeah, man. And looking on, good, man. Keith Claus. Shout out, Keith Claus, y'all. Keith, you looking good, dog. I see you on that baseline, stretching out of them boys. I you see, though. The I Claus see you, here. big fella. Yeah, <laughs> that's my dog, man. Keith yeah. has always been a big supporter of anything that I've done, and I'm a big supporter of the change that he's undergone and the man that he's developed into. Shout out to Keith. Keep going. We yeah. love you, man. Great job, man, on your journey as well, Lon. Lon, um, so Daryl gets drafted number two, spent, you know, some time with the Raiders, um, yeah. you know, went through some things, um, you know, growing pains, if you will. Yeah. How were you supporting him at the time that he was going through some of the darkest struggles of his life? I think I was like security. I think actually that's kind of like the development, some of the development process of me as a young man, because I had to turn into – being a security because the the heart that D Russ had, you know what I mean. Everybody, you know what I mean. You know he he'll literally walk around the club and like see a couple and like buy him a bottle of champagne or invite people to the table. Whether he was bringing fried catfish and shrimp for us over to the crib while we played video games to coming to UCLA basketball games, then going to Madison with us, you know what I mean taking care of dudes when they needed some runarounds. So, you know what I mean? And this dude wasn't no joke as an athlete either. You know what I mean? I dare to say he's one of the best, you know what I mean, football players of all time. So, yeah, uh, uh, especially at his position at the time he got drafted, he had the highest bonus, signing bonus in defensive player history. No question. You know what I mean? It also came up in the draft, you know what I mean, with some issues, but the reason why he wasn't a number one pick. So I got to go through the draft, go behind the scenes with him. His agent was Lee Steinberg. Yeah, uh, Tony's uh, Tony was a client too, TG. So I was with yep. him and Tony back in New York, yep. shopping. You know what I mean? He opened up uh, Wall Street. They did all kind of dope stuff for him. You know, yeah. ended up going number two. I heard about that. Yeah, uh, you know, it was a Pro Bowl, not too maybe in his first or second year or something like that, playing yeah. defensive end and defensive tackle. So yeah. again, then he coming back to UCLA. You know what I mean? Hanging, Hanging out, out with out. us, yep. buying food. Close. Ridiculous, ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, giving sure us giving straight. us major bread. Daryl's like yeah. coming in with a with a roll. Like I'm getting like fifteen hundred from Daryl out the sky. He's throwing it at us. He Daryl used to come in the dorm, throw you throw some money at you, throw some money at me, and then leave and be gone. Do you for remember couple, that for yeah, a couple of days because he had to work saying. out? Yeah, he had to. But he wouldn't say hi. He, he, nope. just, he you you get hit with like a roll of hundreds. Yeah. You're like what? Like what's going on? Like what? Yeah. And Daryl just and like I'm out. <laughs> Dude, yeah. that, you guys don't understand. You guys oh, do. That man. is a true story. You guys do not understand the stories, the experiences that we have had, man. We've been sitting yeah. on this too long, but I love bringing up the memory of Daryl because, you know, you know, that when was that? 2006? Yeah. And Mike. So I hadn't been talking to you guys. I think I was overseas. I think we, we kind of separated a little bit. Um, yeah. just in just the natural, you know, sort of evolution of life, you know, guys are apart and it's not the same as it was in college. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I heard about Daryl getting, uh, into the accident mm -hmm. with Mike and, you know, I, uh, it was a very empty feeling. I couldn't imagine. I thought about you first. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, you know, this is, you know, I, I, I wanted to just, where were you when you heard the news and just what happened, man? Dude, you know what? I was with Toby. I was with Toby at the car at Carson at the Home Depot Center. Me and me and Toby was working out there. 
shooting, lifting weights on the diet, you know what I mean, uh, the whole nine. And I remember uh, his mom called me and was like, uh, yeah, hi, Jelani. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I was like, yeah, mom? What, what's good? I thought I was in trouble where we did something, you know, we left something at the, you know, at the house. Yeah, yeah, she yeah, was yeah. like, and then she was like, yeah, uh, T's gone. That's what she called him. She was like, T's gone. And I just, I, I wanted you to be here for me first. And then she was like, okay, okay. And then she was like, it's crazy. She was like, okay, okay then, okay, bye. And then she like hung up because I think she was still in shock. And then I didn't hear from her for a while, for like a couple of days. But I think I was driving and then I was like, uh, I pulled off and Toby was like, Toby, I think I was following Toby. We were going to get something to eat or something. And uh, I pulled off and I was like, uh, I, I wasn't, I almost went through the same shock. That's how I told Toby. So the same way she told me, that's how I told Toby. And then I like skirted off and went back to the crib. But you know what I mean? Toby Bailey, that's why he's my big brother and my dog. He ended up following me to the crib and meeting me there. And I like fell in there like, <clears throat> that's crazy. I'm, I don't want to choke up. But I like fell in there like Toby's hands and shit. So shout out Toby Bailey. He was there for me, you know, when I needed him. That's yeah. that UCLA brotherhood. It's for real, man. Uh, you know, and we, you know, uh, thank you for that. Um, mm -hmm. How just moving on, just the inspiration that he's provided us, you know, it, it makes us just really appreciate life. I know someone so close, you know, you lose someone so close and then you move on. But, you know, you just start to appreciate life more and, and you just kind of sort of change your outlook on things. Would you would you say that that had that type of effect on you moving forward? I think it hit us all. Because it wasn't just about football. Remember, that dude almost had two degrees by the time he left early at SC. So remember how we used to deal with things on an intellectual level, um, how we used to go to different restaurants, you know what I mean, and expose ourselves to you know, you know, finer things. And look. Yeah, living in Blackhawk, you know what I mean, staying at a fat crib. We had, we had all the bread. We had all the Nike gear. He had a Nike contract. He was actually one of the first dudes to start wearing Jordan cleats. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? And, st and stuff like that. He was always a visionary. He was redesigning face masks. First person to do that. You know what I mean? He was always ahead of the curve. Uh, going to Oakley board meetings with him. Oh, yeah. Watching him, watching him erase, you know what I mean? Hearing about yeah. him erasing the, uh, the, the board at Oakley. Talking about redesigning backpacks and glasses and all this other stuff. And then watching Oakley send boxes of stuff to the crib for us to do like research and development and the wear. Remember all that crazy ugly stuff we had? Yeah, ugly yeah. sneakers. It was sick. Backpacks. Uh, and y'all was, was not stingy with it either because I was nah, lying. Nah, it was Oakley. for the homies. We just dragging it right back to the homies. So so stuff like that. Just talking about business. He was one of the first people to start talking about dispensaries and where cannabis was going to go. And, you know, he ultimately actually that uh, just, you know what I mean, seeing where things go in full circle now, you know what I mean? He, it was just a, a a phenomenal experience, a phenomenal human being who gave up so much of himself, you know what I mean, to literally random people if he saw that they needed it. He did countless things behind the scene for countless people. And you know what I mean? It just him being a friend of mine since fourth grade and then kind of having you guys get together and vibe how you did, you know what I mean, meant the world to me. So, you know what I mean? Those are just, you know, those are some of the greatest times of my life. I still think about those to this day. Mine too. The source yeah. of inspiration for me is just those memories, man. I just, yeah, it just makes me keep going. Um, I, here's, I, we're going to move on from Daryl, rest in peace. Yeah. So, so I want to, but I do want to ask you an interesting question because we have shared experience. And so I want to, yeah. I want to explain to you how, I, what I did with it, and I want to know what you did with it. Yeah. Um, so back in college, we were suspended for the same thing. So we had to go through sort of this rehabilitation program. Yeah. So we were in, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous, Mar Marijuana Anonymous. We had to go to a ton of meetings. And then we met, though, three times a week with our doctor, Dr. Gene. Oberts. Oberts, Dr. G. Love Oberts. that woman, man. If, I ever, <laughs> if you ever see her, hear from her, if she's out there, if somebody knows her, please tag me so I can send her a message. Yeah. So what Dr. Gene helped me with um, was stuff that I started to notice later on in life. Like I would have this consciousness. I would have this voice in my head about just decision making and being accountable okay. and and being accountable for your decisions you know it was all about accountability and living with your decisions and this and that and not you know the whole thing so my question is this dr gene 
she, you know, she definitely helped me in the near term and the long term. I just want to know, it, you know, what did you take from her? And is it something that has, you know, helped round you as a, as a father? I think that was her thing, right, is decision making. You know what I mean? After that, all that analysis and stuff that we had to go through in those offices three times a week, you know what I mean? If we were late, that was considered a positive test, whatever that's supposed to mean. But anyway, you know, <laughs> uh, um, uh, we ended up getting a chance to meet Dr. Oberson. You know, she explained us that, you know what I mean, uh, that we had decision making problems and they weren't necessarily substance abuse problems, but, you know, uh, this, the fight, how, despite how we felt about cannabis, how we described like we'd rather have smoke than drink and what it actually, we felt like it does for us. You know, the things that, you, that yeah. say that it does for people now. Why yeah, most people, we, we were saying I mean? that back in the day. Yeah, you know what I mean? So she, we were, she was clearly stating that us as yet, but you signed a contract with the NCAA and UCLA and right. those aren't the rules. The rules. So, and you guys are highly intelligent young men. So you clearly have a decision making, you know, and you have a problem with decision making and at some point. So, you know, that was that was clearly her thing. So uh, what 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 I took from from her experience was uh, also uh, forgiving myself. Mm. Right. Talk because that was traumatizing. That. You know yeah. what I mean? At, at the time, we were very young men. So I took uh, I took from, from my experience with her. I took a forgiving myself. You know what I mean. Be cognizant of this decision making. Know yeah. what's going to come if you decide to be a vanguard and stand up for something. Remember that whole thing. Okay, if you're going to stand up for something and put yourself out there like that, you got to be make sure you're healthy enough to to be that guy. Yeah. You, you, you know what I mean. You want to do things like playing the NBA and yeah. they have rules. Or, you know the same thing. You know what I mean. So. It was, it was fighting a good fight, a lot, uh, you know, very early. But, you know what I mean, I'm so glad we met her because, she, like you said, she taught me a lot of things that I didn't know about myself then and things that ended up ultimately led to me being a better father, you know what I mean, and wanting to be a better father and even wanting to have kids at that point. You know yeah. I mean? yeah, yeah, being equipped, feeling like you're equipped to be a good dad. I mean, that's a big thing, too, not just feeling like, hey, you accidentally have, you not accidentally, but you know how it is back in the day. You know, we're living a philanderous lifestyle and doing things. And, well, yeah. not you, I mean, myself. I can only speak for myself. Ah, I appreciate you not talking and, 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 and how I, dog No, I, yeah, I can't. I can't say anything. <laughs> I can't speak for you. I can only speak for Chris Bond Johnson here. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, anyway, looking back on it, you know, it was interesting. I also had good experiences with Dr. Parham. Yeah, um, Dr. Parham. So he was addressing, you know, just Ended mental up health. Being Daryl's doctor. Yeah, Daryl's doctor, and then he's on. Um, then he's on um, the NBA Players Association. I think he works with the NBA Players yes. Association. Yes. So Dr. Parham is at UCLA, and again, you know, I, I suggest that any athletes out there get ahead of this mental health thing. Start talking to somebody that's go. qualified. Um, yeah. There's nothing wrong with it. Back then, you know, they try to make you know. I'm, when I say they, it's sort of this idea of this the mainstream you know oh he's crazy so you know he needs to go talk to somebody you know what i'm saying but it's very dismiss it was very dismissive it's, it's a dismissive yeah, thing to it, do is throw somebody in the box and say they're crazy or they're eccentric yes you know I mean? that's and what they did thing that, uh that, that they helped me with it i didn't know that this, going back to uh, dr Albers, i didn't know that i had horrible ocd oh right she helped you figure that out huh right in the, that in the movie the aviator like, I didn't know that there was other people. Like, I used to try to keep that stuff annoyed. Like, that's why I had problems, certain problems with people touching me. I yeah. used to count all the remotes. You wow. know, I remember I used to open the, the refrigerator door incessantly until they sounded right. So yeah, you were it. really strange. You were really strange. I yeah. would say you were really strange. I thought it was just a San Diego thing, but it's it was something larger. I see. Yeah, that. I appreciate that. You know, yeah, I, mean? no problem. At least I, I love, love you. I, yeah. hey, you're my guy. You're my guy. I, yeah. At least I can do <laughs> 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 yeah sure. but uh but no but mental health is a real thing guys and I mean, yeah. we're not trying to make light of it we, we, no. we, if, you, if you're a coach if you're an educator if you're anybody that's involved with with the youth make sure that that's addressed also and, yeah. and take and take the the when kids call out you know when they cry out for help you know you got to be able to be, have a trained eye to be able to know what time it is like it's not always oh he's a badass oh he grew up over here oh he this and he that you need to start to get to know kids and be patient with kids and really provide some type of help instead of just writing people off and trying to right. institution institutionalize them and then it just you know becomes the bull crap you need to you know help first you know help and heal first mm -hmm. before anything 
Um, so, Lon, just kind of, you know, moving on from that, um, what made you decide to hang it up, to, to call it a, a career from playing basketball? Um, every uh, in, Injuries, there's some of the things, like, I was starting to see, you know, but going overseas, and I went, and like, always, I was, like, in the second or third wave of, you know, transfers or people you can take overseas. So I basically went in as, like, a hired gun or assassin, a team trying to make the playoffs. So my, uh, everything was very stressful when I left over there. I always had to leave, leave abruptly, you know what I mean, and go over there and get a team to the playoffs or get a team – to the A division, you know what yeah. I mean, and all that good stuff in different countries. So that, that you know what I mean, uh, just a couple of things that happened to me. Really mental health. Now that we, we, we talked about it, you know what I yeah. mean, I wasn't built to be away uh, from, from, uh, from, from my family, friends, you know what I mean, in a time when I was going through a process when I needed to be healing through a couple of things, going through the mental fatigue of going in and out the NBA, you know what I mean? And things like that, losing friends, you know what I mean? And, and other, other family issues and just trying to grow as a young man. Uh, uh, it just, it just, you know, it affected the basketball. I had a short, you already know, I had a short fuse, you know what I mean? I'm not going to listen to people out of, you know, I had a tough time listening to people, especially in basketball, with not yeah. high IQs that don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? It became hard for me to fake it over there. So, you know what I mean? By the time I was a month in, I had me like have an attitude and be ready to go. So I just decided to hang it up. You know what I mean? I know I can do some other things. So I came home and did some other things. That's excellent. So let's segue into what you came home and started doing. I know you started, uh, I know you were in TV for a little bit, the coaching thing. You're down in Memphis with the summer league. You coach yeah. with me, with the pumps. But just talk yeah. about post-career Lon, Jelani McCoy, and the transition into Man, I thought I was going to jump right back into the hoop thing, you know what I mean, and, and give, a, you know, give, my, but, you know, give my second half of my life, so to speak, to basketball. Um, we did the Pump Brothers thing, you know what I mean? We saw a bunch of, you know, we had some great games. We worked with a wide variety of different kids. Taj, who's on uh, Last Chance U. Um, uh, uh, well, we got a couple guys from D1 scholarships. We did. We did. We did on the B team, so to speak. You know what yeah. I mean? We, we beat the balls. We did. You know what I mean? We, yeah, did. we had a great time. Uh, you remember Demarie? Demarie. He plays for Oral Roberts. So he was in the Sweet 16. He plays for Oral Roberts, bro. See what I'm saying? Demario Jones. That's, that's what I live for, man. I'm glad you told me that, man. Yeah, he was, a, like I'm saying, we worked the whole, you know what I mean, spectrum of kids, you know what I mean? I'm glad we got them some kids, some scholarships, but uh, I thought I was going to do the coaching thing. Uh, went to some Players Association uh, events, you know what I mean, about, you know, organizing, getting yourself together, the transition, you know, I attended a lot of those things. A lot Were of those things don't... helpful? Were those things helpful, Lon? Hey, man, if you in there and you listening and you treating it for what it is, they were very helpful because I feel like a lot of the message is lost because people go for the wrong reasons. They go mm. to get out of the house. Yeah. Sometimes they'd be in Vegas. You know, they were in Vegas. Mm. They take care of, you know what I mean, your flight, you know what I mean, yeah. and all that other good stuff. So, you know what I mean, yeah. they can't be helpful if you're in there paying attention, you know what I mean? But if you're in there, you keyed from the night before because you went out, you know what I mean, you just came to hang out with the homies and get the house, you'll miss the message because they do be watching who's watching. And they'll point you this way, you know what I mean? They can help you make your thing go a lot faster if you can go okay. out there and listen to the clues. So I advise yeah. all all former players to go to those things, you know what I mean? Not just to hang out, actually go, you know what I mean? To sit down there and take the notes. They, they're like long sessions too, you know what I mean? So that's different for us. They're going back and getting in like a classroom or something like that. So I advise former players to take advantage of the MBPA because I think they do a great job. And it's only, getting, it's only gotten better since the time I used some of those programs. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah, I went and did that. I went and coached for Memphis, like you said, with uh, big bro David Fisdale. Uh, for the Memphis Summer League, we ended up. I think we lost in the finals during the Summer League. Man, how did you How did you link up with with Fizz? How did you link up with Fizz? Man, I know Fizz. Another uh, uh, and Darryl, he uh, know me and Daryl since I know Fizz since about eighth grade. Wow, because he played at USD, so he okay. was in a lot of the runs and pickups and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I know okay. Fizz. You know what I mean? We've been we've been because he's a Fremont long. guy. He from he from my way. He from my yeah, way. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You already know. You know what I mean. Yeah. So I was just, I was just with Fizz, as a matter of fact, last night at that. How's he doing? Fire. How's he's he doing? doing? Great. Had TV stuff. He's doing all the TV. Yeah, stuff? doing oh, his wow. TV, ESPN stuff. You know what I mean. Oh. OG Fizz. You know. Tell him I mm -hmm. said congratulations, man, on the baby, man. I will. Boy, for boy sure. or girl? Boy. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Keep it going. Keep it yes, going. Sir.
Um, but then, uh, yeah, got into that. Uh, got fast track for coaching. Like, shout out Tim Gergerich. You know what I mean? One of my mentors is Gerg. A lot of people don't know that. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know, one of Tark's right hand man. So, Tim Gergerich had got me fast tracked in coaching. Uh, you know, he, he had lend, lend his expertise to, expertise to me. So, uh, the actually, the day my mother passed was the day Gerg called me and told me I, that I had to get to Vegas and do a workout with I think it was the Hawks because they wanted to hire me as a D-lead coach and right after for one year and then I would be on staff. And my man at the time who I've been at some of those players association meetings yeah. for front office training was uh, Malik Rose. Oh, Malik. One of the coolest brothers I you ever would, San Antonio ever seen Malik me. Rose. Yeah. Oh, Malik Rose was me. Drexel. Malik. He went Drexel. to Drexel. Philly. Smart brother, you know yeah. what I mean? Good brother. We vibed it like some front office training with the MBPA because at one point in time they told me I could do that. Yeah. So I was like in a hybrid position where I can be like partially front office or partially, you know, go back, start teaching bigs, player development because I kept myself in shape. I could keep me into the coaching thing. Ultimately, I lost my mom's that the same day I was supposed to, you know, basically offer this opportunity to just go out, just come out here and do a workout, do the thing, kid, you know what I mean? Boom, bam, we go to dinner, you get this job. It's already done. So I was like, uh, hey, Gerg, you know what I mean? I told him what was happening. And Gerg is so funny. He was like, damn, you don't really want to be talking to me, kid. And he was like, and I was like, well, well no, nah, this is probably good. You know what I mean? I can go out there. This can distract me. You know what I mean? Fast forward, I start talking to Malik Rose because I had been ignoring his text messages. Yeah. Malik Rose had just lost his mother. So in between, because he was like, how come you're not returning Malik's, Malik's calls? So, uh, we we all talking. And I was like, I told Malik what happened. I told Gary, you know what I mean? I was going to try to do it anyway. But Malik hit me and was like, I just lost my mom. We'll always have the opportunity if I got a job for you to come in and coach or, to, you know, do whatever. You know what I mean? Let's rehash this down the line. But, you know what I mean? Uh, thinking in, in hindsight, it would I would have never got to do, the, you know, some of the cool stuff that I'm doing now. If I had went back to coaching and the hours of coaching, you know, being away from my family, which is ultimately why I stopped playing basketball. So, you know what I mean? It ended up uh, working out. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine what you what that was like um, going through that during that yeah. time. But I, I do want to know how you were, what did inspiration, what motivation, what kept you going? Because, brother, I mean, Rest in peace. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't even imagine my mom being gone. I haven't yeah. talked to my mom in years either. So it's like a whole thing that I have that I think about every single day. Hey, that's what was going on. Our, our, our relationship was rocky and going back and forth and the whole thing. So, you know what I mean? But we'll have another conversation about that. You might yeah. have to, you might want to, you know, bite yeah, the bullet yeah. on the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, no. So, yeah. um, no, but, but talk about after the, 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 the all the training with the Players Association and the coaching, mm -hmm. and then you do, went through the coaching thing, and then you said, hey, I'm going to start with the digital stuff. You started yeah. at Officialized as Chief Strategy Officer, correct? Yeah. So what kind of skill sets and what type of experience did you gain from, from that role as far as in corporate America? Well, before that, um, BD hit us in that chat and was like, I'm about to go to CES. Oh, anybody that want to go, you know what I mean? Just get you there. You went. Ah, oh, talk he to was me. like, just, just, we just get there and I got you. I went. And BD at the time was the commissioner of CES. You know what I mean? He was like the official face of CES, Baron Davis. I know. Right? So we went and I just immersed myself and I learned everything. I started seeing all the technology. I started seeing where technology was going. This is when they were talking about AK and 4K. This was a couple of years ago, you know what I mean? Electronic cars and all this stuff. And I started seeing how some of the business was being done and how he was using his influence as an all-star and investor in things like vitamin water to ultimately uh, pierce the veil and get behind certain walls that we didn't know exist. You know what I mean? Talk to our crowd, our, um, our our viewers about what CES is, what the setup. What give us, you know, give us a description of what it is. CES is like is, is like a, an event that convention that happens everything in, in Vegas, basically everything technology. Okay, you know what okay. I mean from from ring doorbells to smart speakers to um, micro transit things. You know yeah. what I mean to. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
uh, new lights or things for, for uh, a shining sign, op new open signs, you know what yeah. I mean? Things yeah. blasting AK, whatever you can think of, you know, yeah. I mean? anything yeah. in technology. But what we, but what we ha were able to see was there was that CES, then there was another CES where where all the policymakers were from were from around the country. What type of policy are we talking about? I'm here? talking about political people that have to make mm -hmm. policy because once tech takes over, yeah, policy has to surround yeah. tech. Regulations. Regulations. You know how the currency is going to be distributed. Evaluations. You know what Everything. I mean? All that. All that other stuff. Everything. You know what I mean? So those were the real people who put on CES. And we had a good chance to go talk to those people. Uh, we had a, a guide who he introduced me to like a person a minute for like the, for like the first 30, 30, 40 minutes of the oh, party. Oh, it was like that? Yeah, he was like, he was like uh, Jelani, this is, you know, uh, Jelani's with, you know. Were you, I mean? were you exchanging business cards at all? Yes. No, oh. actually, I was taking them. I didn't have any, any oh, you business were cards enough. So okay. I was taking, I had to like, I still got some of them. It, I, it, was, it was amazing. Yeah, I'm just kept. making sure you're on your shit. That's I was on my shit. You know what I mean? BD, BD was on our shit. We was learning I know, at I the same time. We was learning at the same time too. So we got a lot done, but we started to learn, you know what I mean? The digital space and content and how nothing really exist, can't exist without content. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I just studied, uh, like I said, I studied, I locked myself in the room. Wow. I started studying um, social media. I started studying e -com. I yeah. started studying storytelling. I started reading screenplays. I started halfway writing screenplays. I was just yeah. any, every, any and everything. I started watching stuff. Uh, Sam Jura, Kira Kurosawa films. You know what I mean? You know how we get down. You know yeah. what I mean? Real, real, real shit. Samurai? So, the samurai stuff? Yeah, the seven samurai, Sam Jura. You know <laughs> what I mean? I started going deep in the anime. You know what I mean? Just completely immersing yeah. myself in storytelling. And ultimately ended up landing a job at Officialize, you know, because I learned the business aspect too, yeah. you know what I mean? So I took a job at CSO and like head of content, ended up directing, you know what I mean? Uh, Matt Barnes and the thing, you know, I did my, one of my first things, I, I, I tossed the mat immediately. Uh, it was called The Wake Up Call with Grayson Barnes, Devontae Graham and Grayson Allen, Devontae Graham and uh, Mike. Who else the was, it? was it the receiver from Tampa Bay? I saw no, we did. Yeah, I did a bunch of content. I did, a, did that stuff with Mike Evans. Oh, Mike Evans. Yeah, I saw that thing. That was good. Salvi from the KC Royals. You had a baseball uh, player too. Oh, yeah, so we it did. Salvi? A, it must have been Salvi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Return Address, which was a series, which was like Cribs. You know, I saw it's probably still on YouTube too. So I yeah. got to co direct, executive produce, learn how to chop, edit, you know what I mean, do all the revisions, work with the talent, be on set, you know what I mean? So I actually got to do that stuff, you know what I mean? But then yeah. I had the the task of actually getting it distributed and finding uh, a brands that we can do, you know what I mean, do deals with and all that other stuff. So I had to learn the business, start well. And that's when I really started to, you know, craft my bit, you know, of storytelling. And, you know, if I can, you know, I don't really touch cameras, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. it's tall and all that good stuff, but oh. I can, you know, co-direct, you know what I mean? I plan on directing the feature pretty soon, you know what I mean? So I've just been learning. My dog, Josh Sigma, you know what I mean? Sigma Films. Shout out, Josh. Shout, Shout out, out, Big Josh. Josh, you know what I mean? As always. I'm always learning from Josh, you know what I mean, and a couple of other people. So, you know, that's how I really got a hands-on experience. Yeah. Aside from, you know what I mean, family being in the entertainment business. Like what, 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 do you, what, what would you say was the biggest challenge in working in a space that you didn't have a lot of experience in? Yeah. That you, you know, what was the biggest challenge? My, the biggest challenge was just walking in there as like, you know, basically the only black dude, you know, retired professional athlete. And at the time we were taking the company into like another turn that, you know, was by basically back end e-com, help people do their um, websites, you know what I mean? And all yeah. that stuff. But then we were putting added content and becoming a digital, uh, digital platform yeah. for, you know, uh, a storytelling for athletes. And we had Richard Sherman, we had OBJ, we had Rob Gronkowski, we had, I was leading them into the NBA, so we had Udonis Haslam, um, Andrew McCautry, uh, we had a NASCAR racer, you know what I mean? We're just being diverse, so you know, again, those people had stores, yeah. they did their logos, they had e-commerce stores and all that stuff, so. That's a nice play. Um, 
yeah, I just, you know what I mean? I just, I just sat there for a minute and I learned, you know what I mean? And, 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 and learned what lot not to do also. And then, you know, it was a, just a great experience. I don't know if it was lucky as much to me just being open and to being uncomfortable as a retired athlete, only black guy, you know what I mean, in there. You know, it, it came with a look. Yeah, it did. It's so, it's ironic because I, I had a similar experience. So for us as, as, you know, pro athletes, former pro athletes, our job experience comes in sports. You're right. So when we retire and go home, you know, it's tough to land a job with no experience, right? right. Unless it's a, it's a job in the league or it's right. a college coaching job. It's a basketball job. Typically those jobs, you know, they're not really trying to roll with you. So we have to figure out ways to, you know, become like transition into regular society. Mm -hmm. doing things like getting blessed with opportunities like you where you can learn and be hands-on and be immersed in a space to where your uh, your your learning curve is accelerated mm -hmm. that's how you get good for me personally 2011 i'm in new york uh steve lavin i go to uh, dinner with steve lavin and gene katie he's meeting this guy this guy has this idea about this I iphone ipad app that he yeah. wants to he wants to revolutionize sports by digitizing the recruiting process and this and that. So Lab brings me to the meeting because a um, a year before with my brother I love McConan before he made it we were doing this whole thing studying iPhones and this is 2008. So I studied about Steve Jobs. I became enamored like a Steve yeah. Jobs type dude. Yeah. You know just just start worshiping Steve Jobs and everything he did. So I was all on the iPhone. So yeah. I, so I meet this guy Greg in 2011. And we, you know, we go to dinner, we, you know, we're in Soho, we're walking around and, you know, we hit it off and I'm just talking the talk. I know how to talk. I understand everything he's, he's saying. I understand, yeah. I just understand everything, the cloud yeah. to the phone processes and everything that he was talking about. So because of that and because of the influence that I did wield in the sports industry, yeah. I was able to secure a position in that company. I, was I the third, remember. Seven years. I was there seven years and I held titles. I went to MIT Sloan to sports analytics conference. Yeah. Um, hanging out with Mark Cuban, Daryl Morey, listening to all that stuff. I mean, you're just soaking it up. Guys like us, basketball players, athletes, all we need is a shot. All we need is a shot. You just need to fall back on soaking up game and being in like Lewis, you know, the, the CEO at the time, he sent me to a bunch of executive courses, like yeah. I had mentors and all these different tests like he wanted me to do, yeah. books like I had to read. So don't doubt for a minute, like, like we didn't take those advantages just because we knew how to talk or talk, you know what I mean? Because a lot of us do at the end of the yeah. day, but at some point in time, the talent has to come through and hoopers know what it is. We just beat ourselves up so, so much when basketball doesn't go right. We don't tap into our innate ability to assess yeah. information fast. And that's what we do. Yeah. Basketball yeah. players are like superheroes. Anybody that can take a live <laughs> object and, I mean, pass in millisecond and make these same decisions while running. And while, yeah, you know, Football jumping. players can pick that thing up and run with it at the end yeah. of the day. You know, yeah. you ain't got to make a decision with it. You yeah, got to make gotta a move. decision. So we, we just lose sight of that, you know what I mean, somehow. Yeah, and, and, and the skills, like, you know, that you learn from, like, having an internship and things, I was able to learn, like, Excel. I got really good at Excel, got really good at PowerPoint, got really good understood just everything going on with everything that's going on. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It was like, I felt good about that because – it was just a training and a confidence now to go out into the business world now where you just feel like, you know, you're just equipped. You're equipped properly. And, and I got leads, something for that. And that leads me to 34 Media when you decided to, you know, bet on yourself yeah. and go out, go out on your own. Yeah. What made you made that decision? What catalyzed that decision? It was it was just time. Media media thirty four. It was just time. You know, I had I had I had the domain and everything or the, the idea and the name for a while. Um I hooked up with Ray Young, you know what I mean? And uh and Ray was we were consulting together, you know, at, at Slick for we OG, we first team all American all time at Slick, you know what I mean? So yeah. Uh, we, we were doing a lot of stuff over at Slick, you know what I mean? And then, you know, we just wanted to do other things, you know what I mean? And uh, take on ownership. Our, our Media 34 was came about because we wanted to take ownership on by ourselves. So if we wanted to, something to go wrong, we wanted to be able to blame ourselves or something when we were on the right. We wanted to be able to high five ourselves, you know what I mean? And some of the people like you and do stuff for people with our immediate network, who we wanted to do stuff for. We thought our yeah. network, our people, our style, uh, our access was cool enough. It had been for, you know what I mean, other people during consulting, at officialized with other athletes, you know what I mean, met a lot of bunch of people, got a lot of good connects. 
And uh, it just ultimately came to where it was time. You know what I yeah. mean? We had a different way that we had a certain way we wanted to tell stories, certain stories we wanted to tell, certain people we wanted to get flowers. And yep. we didn't want to keep telling the same stories over and over and over again. You know what I mean? Because there's so many micro stories. Yeah. You know what I mean? The, and people and interesting subjects that don't get a documentary that yeah. might should. Yeah. They could get privately funded or, you know what I mean, some type of brand, upcoming brand wants to be attracted to it, you know what I mean? Uh, up and coming story that we can get eyeballs on, then it makes sense to tell some of the stories that we know are dope. So that's yeah. how it all came. That's how it all came about. Uh, we've been able to do stuff with shout out my boy, uh, shout out to my boy Holiday. Um, we was able to do stuff with um, President on the campaign with President Biden. You know what I mean with Udonis Haslam, uh, Carl Anthony Towns, uh, Wait, Brother so talk, Barnes. Talk about the talk about what you did with the uh, Biden Harris campaign. Where you went and what you did. We had this whole idea, you know what I mean, where uh, where Matt was going to get an opportunity through a through a mutual friend of ours and all all, all natural, uh, just all good around brother, you know what I mean, who I, I get, who again teaches me a lot, who we learned from young brother who was a part of the presidential campaign of the Obama, Obama administration. Yeah. So uh, he he reached out to us. He wanted he had this great idea, you know what I mean, about how we wanted to do an interview, you know what I mean, with with uh, with, with Matt. And President Biden, like, what the hell? You know what I mean? So we was like, we was like, damn, you know what I mean? Cool, that sounds perfect, you know what I mean? So we ended, he ended up setting it up, you know what I mean? We got to fly private and on the way, uh, on the jet, you know what I mean? We were all just talking and like, what makes the most sense? We're sharing notes, what makes the most sense for an interview? And I think, I don't know if it was Chris or all of us collectively, it was like, let's just ask him about the crime bill. And we was like, what? And you guys like, yeah, let's just ask him, you know, let's just get right to it. You know what I mean? Like, like, like he should just go right in yeah. and ask him about the crime bill and the effects yeah. of the crime bill. And that's exactly, yeah. you know what I mean? That's exactly what he did. And that's exactly what we got. And we're, uh, so what did he say? I haven't watched the interview in its entirety. Yeah. What, did, what did he say about the crime bill? Do you I remember? I mean, this, mind you, this is in Florida while he's campaigning. You know what I mean? Obviously, yeah. COVID protocols, we had to, you know, yeah. quarantine for like a couple of days or whatever. We had the whole thing. We had to follow up before you go see the president. We were actually in the caravan yeah. the whole nine. Yeah. Uh, he admitted to his mistakes. Yeah. And he, he basically said he knows how it affected, you know what I mean, the black and brown community, you know what I mean, what the jail system. He didn't hide from it. And I thought Good. that was cold-blooded. You know what I mean? At the time, regardless of how you feel about the man or, what he, or whatever your politics is, it takes somebody to own up there to mistakes, especially on the biggest stage of the world. Yeah. And he owned, it up, owned up to his mistakes. It was quick. Matt got out of there. You know what I mean? He, got a, he, he turned into like super journalist, very professional, got in and out of there. He continued, you know, the different stops because they were trying to get the Florida vote up. Mm -hmm. So we were deep in Dade County, uh, you know, Miami, where we had Udonis Haslam with us. So we did an interview with Udonis Haslam. We got the interview with Carl Anthony Towns about him losing all those people to COVID. You know what I mean? So there's a lot of other stuff that happened, you know what I mean, behind the scenes that we're, we're still, we're still going to let, uh, you know what I mean, release uh, pr pretty soon here. But Matt did a phenomenal job. And, you know what I mean, it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I'm glad we, you know, we, we took up on it. That's awesome, man. What is in store for Jelani McCoy in 2021? I mean, 2021, we're going to really give back to this, you know, back to some, uh, uh, we've been some premium, well, how well we feel is premium long form uh, storytelling, right? So uh, we got, I think, I think uh, we're going to be coming out with Ray's doc is coming soon. You know what I mean? Ray Young, Ray Young has my business partner. Shout out Ray Young. You know what I mean? Shout out Co-founder of Media 34. You know what I mean? A national treasure. Ray's you know been on I mean? the show. Yeah, Ray's you know, Ray's been here. So Ray's been doing a, doing a phenomenal job. We, we got his probably going to get do his doc coming up. Then we're doing we're going to look at doing Daryl's mine and a couple other things that you know yeah. we, we're going to keep on the tuck. You know what I mean? So we're just going you know what I mean ramp up ramp up. You know what I mean the stories the the storytelling on our end through our lens. You know what I mean the correct way while being collaborative and, and being mindful of you know what I mean who's who's watching and who's listening mainly the babies. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, that's how we're going to jam in 2021. Um, thinking about bringing my podcast back, you know what I mean, uh, that I had. So we, we've been talking about doing that and just really honing in on, 
you know, buttoning up this stuff like website and all that other stuff that people tend to forget about when you move fast. So that's all we're about in 2021. Man, that's awesome, man. And, yeah. you know, you know, anything that's popping with you, you got to come through and talk about it. You know what I'm saying? On here first before you no go doubt. to like the big boys and stuff. You can holler at your, your man. You know, I'm nobody, but hopefully you won't forget you when you hit the big. KJ Live. Oh, KJ Live. No line. Um, man, it's been a real two hours today. Yeah. Um, we could probably do this for another four hours, six hours. But um, yeah. man, thank you for being so transparent and candid and uh, hitting on some stuff. I know it was a little, you know, it wasn't easy, but thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, brother. I appreciate you, man. Always love, man. I know this is a safe place, you know what I mean? And you got, you know, I'm, you know, you got this thing going. So let's, you know, whatever you need, you know, I'm always here and I'm always supporting. And then we got, I think we got a lot of game and story that people need to hear, a lot of context, you know what I yeah. mean? Because I feel like it's like Kevin Bacon with us within Los Angeles Bacon basketball in <laughs> yeah, California. It is. And whether being an almanac or even having been there, having yeah. done success, or being an almanac and doing our research, you know what I mean? Absolutely. You probably know something about it. So, you know what I mean? I'm here for it. And, you know, like you said, whenever you want to do these, I'm with it. All right, my man. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Jelani McCoy. KJ I love you, brother. <laughs> I love you, man. I'll talk I to you later. You too, bro.